everybody and welcome back to Grandma's Corner 2020. We are all ready for bed. We've got our nighttime gear on and I have a book that I'm going to read called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Usually we say cloudy with a chance of rain. Who says cloudy with a chance of meatballs? Well, we're going to find out what this book is all about because I think this is going to be hilarious. But I have to have my cheaters because those words are pretty darn small. So this is written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. So thank you so much for this lovely book. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. All right, here we go. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was making orange juice. Henry and I were beating betting on how many pancakes we could eat, and Grandpa was flipping the pancakes. Seconds later, a pancake flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling. You see it flying up there? We all laughed, even Grandpa, whoops, and landed right on Henry. Ha! Huh, forgot that part. Flipped through the air and landed on Henry. We all laughed, even Grandpa. All the other pancakes landed in the pan. We ate all of them, even the one that landed on Henry. <laughs> that night, Grandpa told us the best bedtime story ever. He said the flying pancake made him think of it. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. Have you heard of ever, ever heard of a town called Chew and Swallow? Sounds made up to me. In most ways, it was like any other tiny town. It had a main street, stores, houses, trees, gardens, and a schoolhouse, and about 300 people and some dogs and cats. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Well, how fun would that be? It never rained rain. It never snowed snow. And it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in a storm of hamburgers. How crazy is that? Every morning, people watched the weather report on TV to find out what they would eat that day. They would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way, they would always be ready for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerator in case they got hungry between meals. Are you dreaming right now what kind of weather you would want? <laughs> I am. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. First, there was a shower of orange juice. Then, low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Pe uh, butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast. And most of the time, it rained milk afterward. For lunch one day, frankfurters in rolls blew in from the southwest about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind sheltered to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal.
For dinner one night, there were lamb chops becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. Look at that. That's a one big giant jello. The sanitation department at Chew and Swallow had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then they emptied the leftovers into the ocean for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. <laughs> Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. And here's the newspaper ad that says, The Chew and Swallow Digest, Spaghetti Ties Up Town. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day, there was pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could hardly find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. There's your pea soup fog. The food was getting larger and larger. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. No one had ever seen such big slices of bread or large, such large rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. The mess took the sanitation workers four days to clean up, and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. It stayed there and got very hard and stale. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered, with, covered the school. No one could get it off. So they had to close the school. Lunch one day brought 15 inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind followed by an even worse tornado of tomato. People were sneezing themselves silly. The town was a mess. There were seeds and tomato pulp everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been hit by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there was no school for the children. So they decided to leave the town of Chew and Swallow. They had to. The people made rafts out of giant pieces of stale bread glued together with peanut butter and set sail for a new land. <laughs> that crazy boat. <laughs> After sailing for a week, they reached a small friendly town. They built houses for themselves out of their rafts. The children began school again and the adults found jobs. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying their food at the supermarket. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to Chew and Swallow to find out what happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning we woke up to see new 
snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we're sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. So what are they looking at when they say, we almost saw a giant pat of butter? Could that be the sun coming up? And all that snow looks like mashed potatoes. The end. Well, that was a fun book. Can you imagine living in a place where food came down from the sky and you never had to go shopping? But then it got a little bit crazy, didn't it? There was too much too fast. And they just couldn't hang in there any longer with all that food. So I'm glad it ended on a good note. That was a fun story. And Grandpa told it well. So what do you think, kids? Time to go to bed? I think so. I'm getting tired. They're getting tired. And we will catch you next time. Thank you for subscribing. And I look forward to reading another book to you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.